<clears throat> so you can again play it back to you. Hmm? Okay. Therefore, all demons give up the so-called happiness of family life and simply take shelter under those feet of the Lord. That is the Mahadev, which is the actual shelter of fearlessness. Entanglement in family life is a root cause of material attachment, indefatigable desires, moroseness, anger, despair, fear, and desire for false prestige, all of which result in repetition of birth and death. Words by residents of Jamba Dweep. Oh. So it is, you know, a bit of a tanglement. But the solution is to be Krishna conscious, you know. The solution. Hi, Prabhu. Was trying to join. Can you accept to it? Hi. Please charge now. Please charge now. All right, can you accept my wife's? Um, she's trying to join. Oh, she wants to join, no? Mm -hmm. Oh, my What are you doing, Nina? I'm trying to listen. You can't, there's no video. It's just audio. I'm going to fade it around. Uh, oh, I'm going to show you the point. Yeah, okay, there's the video. Okay, then now. Good. I got a plane, a weather plane. You're you waiting for me to go? Any words? Yeah. So you can oh. see here how the. Wait, this one here. Yeah. Generally, a person living in a family becomes overly attached to fruitive activity. In other words, he tries to enjoy the results of his activities. A devotee, however, knows that Krishna is a supreme enjoyer and a supreme proprietor. Bhattaraha Yagna Tapasyam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram 529 Bhagavad Gita. Consequently, the devotee does not consider himself the proprietor of any occupation. The devotee always thinks of the Supreme Person and Godhead as a proprietor. Therefore, the results of the business are offered to the Supreme Lord. One who lives in this material world with his family and children never become affected by the contaminations of the material world. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. One who tries to enjoy the results of these activities becomes bound by the results. One who offers the results or profits to the Supreme Person and a Godhead, however, does not become entangled in the results. This is a secret of success. Generally, people take sannyas to become free from the reactions of fruit activity. One who does not receive the results of his actions, uh, but offers them instead of the Supreme Person and Godhead, certainly remains in a liberated condition. In Bhakti Rasmita Sindhu, Sri Rupa Goswami confirms this. If one engages himself in the service of the Lord through his life, wealth, words, intelligence, and everything he possesses, he will always be liberated in any condition. Such a person is called a jiva, jivan mukti, one who is liberated during the, this lifetime. 
devoid of Krishna consciousness, those who engage in material activities simply become more entangled in the material bondage. They have to suffer and enjoy the actions and reactions of the activity of all activity. This Krishna conscious move is therefore the greatest boon to humanity because it keeps one always engaged in Krishna's service. The devotees think Krishna act for Krishna, eat for Krishna, sleep for Krishna, and work for Krishna. Thus, everything is engaged in the service of Krishna. A total life in Krishna consciousness saves one from material contamination. As said by Bhakti Siddhanta Sarakrishna Maharaj, if one is just so expert that he can engage everything or dovetail everything in the service of the Lord, to give up the material world would be a great blunder. One should there learn how to devote, no, dovetail everything in the service of the Lord. But everything is connected to Krishna. That is the real purpose of life and the secret of success. As read it late in the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita 3.19. Therefore, without being attached to the fruits of activities, one should act as a matter of duty. But by working without attachment, one attains supreme. The third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita specifically considers material activities for the purpose of sense gratification and material activities for the purpose of satisfying the Supreme Lord. The conclusion is that these are not one and the same. Material activities for sense gratification are the cause of material bondage, whereas the very same activities for the satisfaction of Krishna are the cause of liberation. How the same activity can be the cause of bondage and liberation can be explained as follows. We we'll make it indigestion due to eating too many milk preparations, condensed milk, sweet rice, and so on. But even though there is indigestion or diarrhea, another milk preparation, yogurt, mixed with black pepper and salt, then merely cure these maladies. In other words, one milk preparation can cause indigestion and diarrhea, and another milk preparation can cure them. If one is placed in material opulence due to special mercy, of the Supreme Person and Godhead, he should not consider that the opulence of cause of bondage. Where a mature devotee is blessed with material opulence, he does not become afflicted, affected adversely. For one knows how to enjoy, sorry, one knows how to employ material opulence in the service of the Lord. There are so many examples in the history of the world. There were kings like Ritu Maharaj, Prabhupada Maharaj, Janaka, Dhruva, Vajvatman and Marahaz Ishvaku. All these were great kings and were especially fed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When the devotee is not mature, the Supreme Lord will take away all this, all his. Opulence. The principle is stated by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yashyam Amogurhanam Tanan Sana Sanah. My first mercy shown to my devotee is to take away all his material opulence. Material opulence detrimental to devotional service is taken away by the Supreme Lord, whereas a person who is mature in devotional service is given all material facilities. Yeah. Yes. Good. So you see how, uh, you know, one can get entangled there. Eh? Yeah. It's not too difficult, is it? <laughs> hmm? It's not too difficult to get entangled in material nature. Boys, you guys be quiet, please. Play the issue that you know he was, uh, you know, King Prayavarta was also, you know, he was asked to take over the so. Here you can say in these verses, he refused to, you know, Priyavarta refused to become a householder, you know. Yeah. You know the story. I think so. 
He was taught by his uh, Guru Narada not to go into household life. Ah, that's right. Sang Shan Prabhu, you want to read? Or are you cooking? It's cooking, right? I think I was rolling some at the same time, sorry. No, you're cooking. Um, I'm cooking. Okay, I can read then. Now, Lord Ramadza, person within the universe, said, My dear Briya Ratta, can you hear attentively what I shall say to you? Do not be jealous of the Supreme Lord who is beyond our experimental measures. All of us, including Lord Shiva, your father, and the great sage Maharaj Narad, must carry out the order supreme. We cannot deviate from his order. So this is the order of the Lord. Am I saying it? We cannot avoid the order of supreme person as Godhead, not by strength or severe austerities. An exalted Vedic education or power of mystic guru, physical prowess or intellectual activities. Nor can one use his power of religion, his material offerings, or any other means, either by himself or with the help of others, to defy the orders of the Supreme Lord. That is not possible for any living being from the bar down to the end. And because the entities think they can dis disregard the Lord's rules and regulations of God. <laughs> That's possible. They are for my twin. Even if one goes from the forest to forest, one who is not self-controlled must always fear material bondage because he is living six co-wives. <laughs> the mind and knowledge acquiring senses, even household alike, however, cannot harm a self-satisfied learned man who has conquered his senses. Shri Nathan Dastaka was some Grihiva Varetti Taki. Whether one is situated in the forest or at home, if he is engaged in devotional service of Lord Chaitanya, he is a liberated person. Here, this is also repeated. The one who has not controlled his senses, going to the forest to become a so called yogi is meaningless. Because his uncontrolled mind and senses are going with him. He cannot achieve anything even by giving up household life and staying in the forest. Formerly, many best known men of the country of India used to go to Bengal. And thus, there is a family saying if you go to Bengal, your fortune will go with you. Our first concern, therefore, should be to control the senses. <coughs> Senses cannot be controlled unless engaged in devotional service of the Lord. Our most important duty is engage the senses of devotional service. Bhakti means engagement of the purified senses in the service of the Lord. Even Lord Brahma indicates that instead of going to the forest with uncontrolled senses, it is better and more secure to engage the senses in the service of the Lord. Even household life can do no harm um, to a self-controlled person acting in this way. <clears throat> it cannot force him to material bondage. Rupa Goswami has further enunciated this position. <clears throat> Regardless of one's circumstances, if one is fully enga engages his activities, mind, and words, and the service of the Lord, he should be understood to be a liberated person. So Bhakti Thakur was a responsible um, officer and the householder, yet his service to the cause of expanding the mission of Lord Chaitanya Thakur is unique. Prabhu Hanada Sajwati Thakur says, give me that. <laughs> the sense organs are certainly our greatest enemy. They are therefore compared to venomous serpents. However, if a venomous serpent is bereft of its poisonous fangs, it is no longer fearful. 
Similarly, if the senses are engaged in the service of the Lord, there is no need to fear their activities. The, Lord, the, vo the devotees in the Krishna conscious movement move within this material world. But because their senses are fully engaged in the service of the Lord, they are always aloof to the material world. They are always living in the transcendental position. One who is situated in household life and who systematically conquers his mind and five sense organs is like a king in the fortress who conquers his powerful enemies. That one has been trained in the household life and his lusty desires have decreased. He can move anywhere without danger. The Vedic system of Alvanas and four ashrams is very scientific and its entire purpose is to enable one to control the senses before entering household life, Rihasta Ashram. A student is fully trained to become Chitendriya, a conqueror of the senses. Such a mature student is allowed to become a householder. Because he was first trained in conquering his senses, he retires from household life and becomes Vanaprast. And as soon as the strong ways of youthful life a pass and reaches a very old age of 50 years or slightly more. Then after being further trained, he accepts sannyas. He is then a fully learned and renounced person who can move <laughs> anywhere and everywhere without fear of being captivated by material desires. The senses are considered very powerful enemies. As a king and a strong fortress can conquer powerful enemies, so a household in Grihasta Ashram, household life, can conquer the last size of youth and be very secure when he takes one across in sannyas. There you go, it's all there. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Bhama continued, My dear Priyavrata, seek shelter inside the opening in the lotus feet of the Lord, whose navel is like a lotus. Thus conquer the six sense organs, the mind and knowledge acquiring senses. Accept material enjoyment because the Lord extraordinarily has ordered you to do this. You will thus always be liberated from material association and be able to carry out the Lord's orders in your constitutional position. <clears throat> there are three kinds of men within this material world. Those who are trying to enjoy the senses to utmost are called karmis. Above them are the jnanis who try to conquer the urges of the senses, and above them are the yogis who have already conquered the senses. None of them, however, are situated in the transcendental position. Only devotees who belong to the name of the above mentioned groups are transcendental, as explained in Bhagavad Gita 1426. One who engages in full devotional service who does not fall down in any circumstance at once transcends and modes of mature nature and thus becomes a level Brahman. Lord Brahman herein advises Priyavrata to remain transcendental in the fortress not only <clears throat> not of feminine life but all of the lotus feet of the Lord. <coughs> when a bumblebee enters the opening of a lotus flower and drinks its honey, it is fully protected by the petals of the lotus. The bee is undisturbed by the sunshine and other external influences. Similarly, one who always seeks to shelter at the lotus feet of the personality of Godhead is protected from all dangers. It is therefore said in the Shimha Bhagavatam. When I have taken shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord, everything becomes easier. Indeed, everything, even crossing the great ocean of nescience, is exactly like crossing the hoof print created by a car. That's our problem. For such a devotee, there is no question of remaining in a place where every step is dangerous. Our actual duty is to carry out the supreme order. For the personality of Godhead, if we have fixed now a determination to carry out the supreme order of the Lord, we are always secure. Regardless of where we are situated, whether in hell or in heaven, here in the words Prakrita, Prakritan, but Ajasva are very significant. Prakritim refers to one's constitutional position. Every living entity has a reconstitutional position of being an eternal servant of God. Therefore, Lord Brahma advised be situated in your original position as an eternal servant of the Lord. 
If you carry out his orders, you will never You have to go up through oh, yeah. um, You will never fall even in the midst of material enjoyment. Material enjoyment achieved by the dint of one's fruit activities differs from material enjoyment given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. A devotee sometimes appears to be in a very opulent position, but he accepts a position to follow the orders of the Supreme Personality of the Godhead. Therefore, devotee is never affected by material influences. Devotee is Krishna conscious movement are preaching all over the world in accordance with the order of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They had to meet many karmis, but the, may the mercy of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were unaffected by material influences. He has blessed them as described in the Chaitanya Chaitanya Madhya 7 1 2 9. Kabuna Bahibe, Tamara Vishya, Taram, Unara Pia. Sincere devotee who engages in the service of Lord Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by preaching his cult all over the world will never be affected by Vishayatara, material influences. On the contrary, in due course time he returned to the shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and thus will have perpetual association with him. <clears throat> so you see, uh, this is the uh, order of the Lord. So when we do anything with the order of the Lord, then we are protected, you know? Yep. You know what I'm saying? We're only protected if we sincerely engage in service. Yeah. See, that's also, this point is also elaborated here. Although it is a difficult ashram, but you know. In this part of the Bhagavadam. Do you want us to read that one, Prabhu? Yeah, please read. A householder should comfortably maintain his dependence either with money that comes of his own accord or with that gathered by honest execution of one's duties. According to one's means, one should perform sacrifices and other religious ceremonies. Yeah. A householder taking care of many dependent family members should not become materially attached to them, nor should he become mentally unbalanced, considering himself to be the Lord. An intelligent householder should see that all possible future happiness, just like that which he has already experienced, is temporary. The association of children, wife, relatives, and friends is just like the brief meeting of travelers. With each change of body, one is separated from all such associates, just as one loses the objects one possesses in a dream when the dream is over. without any sense of proprietorship or false ego. In this way, he will not be bound or entangled by domestic affairs. A household of devotees who worships me by executing their duties may remain behind. Go to a holy place, or if he has a responsible son, take them out. But a householder whose mind is attached to his home and who is thus disturbed by ardent desires to enjoy his money and children, who is lusty after women, who is possessed of a miserly mentality and who unintelligently thinks everything is mine and I am everything, 
is certainly bound in illusion. Oh, my poor elderly parents and my wife with a mere infant in her arms and my other young children. Without me, there is absolutely no one to protect them and will suffer unbearably. How can my poor relatives possibly live without me? Thus, because of his foolish mentality, a householder whose heart is overwhelmed by family attachment is never satisfied. Constantly met meditating on his relatives, he dies and enters into a darkness of ignorance. So you see, there's two aspects of householder life. One, to accept it as a service of the Lord, as ordered by the Lord. And another to get completely overwhelmed by it, you know. So the devotees should be very careful to leave. Of course, they always have Krishna in the center, you know. So <clears throat> even though it is very entangling, but because they have Krishna, so there is a saving grace, you know. It is also said by Narada Muni, you know. Narada Muni was speaking to Yudhishthira Maharaj, you know. So Yudhishthira Even though he's a householder, serving the Lord. Hmm? I'm trying to get this verse for you. Okay. Even though he's a householder, I think it's uh, you can't find it. Seventeen, chapter seven, fifteen. You know. Yes. Even though he's a householder. Okay. Sorry, Thai kids, very loud. <laughs> yeah, it's here. it's here. So let us read this section here. It's a pretty interesting. <laughs> Yeah, we get it. this is certain. When one understands the result and cause of one, and that duality is ultimately unreal, like the idea that it's the threads of a cloth are different from one from the cloth itself. One reaches conception of oneness called Baba Dwaita. When all activities are one, so when all activities one performs with his mind, words, and body are dedicated directly to the service of the Supreme Person and Godhead, one reaches oneness of activity called Kriya Dwaita. The Krishna Conscious Movement is teaching people how to come to the state of dedicating everything to the service of the Supreme Person and Godhead. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, 
My son Conti, all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer, and give away as well as all austerities that you may perform should be done as offering unto me. If whatever we do, whatever we eat, whatever we think, and whatever we whatever we plan is for the advancement of Krishna conscious movement, this is oneness. There is no difference between chanting for the Krishna conscious and working for Krishna consciousness. On the transcendental platform, they are one. That we must be guided by the spiritual master about this oneness. We should not manufacture our own oneness. And the ultimate goal and interests of oneself, one's wife, one's children, one's relatives, and all other embodied living beings is one. This is called Dreitavit, or oneness of interest. The actual interest of all living entities, indeed the goal of life, is to return home, back to Godhead. This is the interest of one's own self, one's wife, one's children, one's disciples, and one's friends, relatives, countrymen, and all humanity. The Krishna Conscious Movement can give directions for management by which everyone can partake in Krishna Conscious activities and reach the ultimate goal, which is known as Swata Garib. This objective of everyone's interest is Vishnu, but because people do not know this, they are making various plans by which to fulfill so many conflicting interests in life. The Krishna Cosmic Movement is trying to bring everyone to the highest interest. The process by may be differently named, but if the aim is one, people should follow it. To achieve the ultimate goal of life. Unfortunately, people are thinking of different interests and blind leaders are misleading them. Everyone is trying to reach the goal of complete happiness materially because people do not know what the complete happiness is and materially are diverted towards different interests. In normal condition, in the absence of danger, O King, a man should perform his prescribed duty, uh, activities according to a status of life with the things, endeavors, process, and living palace that are not forbidden for him and not by any other means. The instruction given for men in all statuses of life, generally society is divided into brahmanas, satyas, vaishyas, sutras, brahmacharyas, vanapras, sannyas, and grihasti. Everyone must act according to his position and try to please the Supreme Person and Godhead. That will make one's life successful. This was instructed by Nam Saranya, but in Nam, Nam Saranya. My best among the twice born is therefore concluded that the highest perfe perfection one can achieve by discharging his prescribed duties, Dharma, according to caste divisions and ordered life, is to please Lord Hari. SB, Ashim Bhagavatam 1 13. Everyone should act according to his occupational duties just to please the Supreme Person of the Godhead, and everyone will be happy. O King, one should perform his occupational duties according to these uh, instructions, as well as other instructions given in the Vedic literature, just to remain a devotee of Lord Krishna. Thus, even while at home, one will be able to reach the destination. The ultimate goal of life is Vishnu Krishna. Therefore, either therefore, either by Vedic regulation principles or by materialistic activities, if one tries to reach the destination of Krishna, that is the perfection of life. Krishna should be the target. Everyone should try to reach Krishna for any, from any position of life. Krishna accepts service from anyone, the Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita 9.32. O Sana Prita, those who take shelter in me, though they are of lower birth, women, vaishas, as well as sudras, can approach the supreme destination. It does not matter what one's position is, if one aim, aims at reaching Krishna by performing his occupational duty under the direction of the spiritual master, his life is successful. It is not that only sannyasis, vanapras, and brahmacharis can reach Krishna. A grihasa, a householder, can also reach Krishna, provided he becomes a pure devotee without material desires. As an example of this is cited in the next verse. <clears throat> oh. 
O King Yudhisthira, because your service of the Supreme Lord, all of you Pandavas, defeated the greatest dangers posed by numerous kings and demigods. By serving the lotus feet of Krishna, you conquered the great enemies who were like elephants, and thus you collected ingredients for sacrifice. By his grace, you may be delivered from the material involvement. Placing himself as an ordinary householder, Madhaj Yudhisthira inquired from Narad Muni how Griha Mudha, Griha Mudhadi, a person who is entangled in household life and thus continues to remain a fool, can be delivered. Narad Muni encouraged Madhaj Yudhisthira by saying, You are already on the safe side because you, along with your entire family, have become a pure devotee of Krishna. By Krishna's grace, the Pandava conquered in the battle. I said the Pandavas conquered in the battle of Kurukshetra and were saved from many dangers posed not only by the kings but sometimes even by the demigods. Thus they are practical. Thus they are practical example of how to live in security and safety by the grace of Krishna. Everyone should follow the example of the Pandavas who showed how to save, how to be saved by the grace of Krishna. A Krishna conscious movement is intended to reach, teach how everyone can live peacefully in the material world and at the end of life return home back to Godhead. In the material world, there are always dangers at every step. Padam padam ya vidham na tesham 10, 14, 58. Nonetheless, it takes the shelter of Krishna. If one takes the shelter of Krishna without hesitation and keeps under the, <clears throat> the shelter of Krishna, he can easily cross the ocean of nescience. To the devotee, this great ocean of nescience becomes like a puddle of water in the hoofprint of the cow. A pure devotee, without embarrassing himself by trying for elevation in so many ways, stays in a steadfast position as a servant of Krishna. And thus, his life is eternally safe without a doubt. So, I think, oh, I, think I have tried my have best tried to my explain how a household is uh, also, you know not at a disadvantaged position. Yeah. You can also make it back home, back to God. Provided you keep Krishna in the center, you know. Mm. Because last week we explained how to always keep that by having a strong program in the morning. Hmm? Yes, sir. So if we do this, then I don't think we should have any problem. There's no difference with an householder, a brahmachari, or grahastha, one of us, or sannyas. The same. As long as we keep Krishna in the center. Okay. But without Krishna, then everything will become messed up. No? Even for a sannyasi or brahmachari or anybody, the central point is Krishna. Yeah. That should be understood. What's the use of being a brahmachari and not Krishna conscious? Better to be a householder and be Krishna conscious. Yes? Yes. Krishna says, you know, one who is always meditating <laughs> the sense of Jack is a thief, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah? <coughs> Sorry, Prabhu. The Bhagavad Gita... No, pretender, no? Sorry. Yeah, I can see in this verse. Karmendriyani samyamya ya aste manasha smaran indriyartan vimudatma mithyachara sauchyate. One, three. 
one who restrains his senses of action but whose mind dwells in the sense objects and deludes himself and is called a pretender. Yeah. There's so many uh, pretenders who refuse to work in Krishna consciousness but make a show of meditation while actually dwelling the mind upon sense enjoyment. Such pretenders may also speak on dry philosophy in order to bluff sophisticated followers. According to this verse, there are greatest teachers. For sense enjoyment, one can act in any capacity of the social order. If one follows the rules and regulations of his particular status, he can make gradual progress in purifying his existence. But he who makes a show of being a yogi while actually searching for the objects of sense gratification must be called the greatest cheater, even though. Uh, really, even though he sometimes speaks of philosophy, <clears throat> his, no his, his knowledge has no value because the effects of such a sinful man's knowledge are taken away by the illusory energy of the Lord. Such a pretender's mind is always impure. And therefore, his show of yogic meditation has no value whatsoever. Yestva Indriyani Manasha Niyam Yar Bhutek Chuna Karmendriya Karma Yogam Ashakta Isha Vishishtitri. On the other hand, if a sincere person tries to control the activities, so active centers by the mind, and begins karma yoga in Krishna consciousness without attachment, he is far, he is by far superior. <clears throat> Instead of becoming a pseudo transcendentalist for the sake of wanton living and sense enjoyment, though I remember this verse when I first joined, and <laughs> I've read this one, I always remember this verse. <laughs> So again, she's reminding you. Yeah. Instead of becoming a pseudo transcendentalist for the sake of wanton living and sense enjoyment, it's far better to remain in one's own business and execute the purpose of life. Which is to get free from the material bondage and enter into the kingdom of God. The prime Swaha Gati, or the goal of self-interest, is to reach Vishnu. The whole institution of Vana and Ashram is designed to help us reach this goal of life. A household life can also reach destination by regulated service in Krishna consciousness. For self-realization, one can live in a con controlled life as prescribed in the sastras and continue carrying out his business without attachment and in the way make progress. A sincere person who follows this method is far better situated than a false pretender who adopts show bottle spiritism to cheat the innocent public. <coughs> a sincere Sweeper in the street is far better than the Charlton meditator who meditates only for the sake of making a living. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I definitely remember that one. Nice verse. <laughs> I think this class is very good for all the householders. Yeah. <laughs> you you uh, bring out some nice uh, key verses there from your best courage to all of you. Always we are bashing the householders, but this class is very much encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. This is important too, you know, how to live in Krishna consciousness. <coughs> First, the thing is this, we cannot, you know, control the senses, but that does not mean that we become, you know, what we say, a little bit despondent. I think this is the worst. Let me check. Yeah, this is the one. This is how it should uh, be, you know. Wait a second. Um, having awakened faith in narrations of my glorious and being disgusted with all material activities, knowing that all sense gratification leads to misery but still being unable to renounce all sense enjoyment. My devotees should remain happy and worship me with great faith and conviction. Even though he is sometimes engaged in sense enjoyment, my devotee knows that all sense gratification leads to a miserable result and he sincerely uh, repents such activities. Sincerely repents such activities. Mm. 
So it's a fact, you know, sometimes, but we should just carry on. You know? And to yeah. Krishna make some other arrangement. Mm. So I have taken a lot of your time. I'm sorry. No, we make time for your time. <laughs> How do you it's like us? It's the only way we can uh, keep steadfast in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, you know, we, together we hear, you know, like that today says, you know, it's worth we quote so many times, you know. 7, 3.30. Yeah, you know, this one I quote many times. Yeah. And how to associate with the devotees of the Lord by gathering with them to chant the glories of the Lord. This process is most purifying. <clears throat> As devotees thus develop their loving friendship, they feel mutual happiness and satisfaction. And thus by encouraging one another, they are able to give up material sense gratification, which is a cause of all sufferings. Sense gratification. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also quoted many times in the Chatam Prasangam Mamavidya Samvido Bhavanti Hirt Karna Vishai Natata Jadyo Sanaraswa Pavar Gamatmani Sadarati Bhakti Anukramishati. It's quoted many times even in the CC, you know. In association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation, and therefore he is freed, and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. Okay. So, you know, this is another verse I want to show. A uh, very important verse. I think it is here. I'm sorry. Let me give me a minute there. Eh? Yeah. Yep. Here. Whenever pure topics of the transcendental world are discussed, the members of the audience forget all kinds of material hankering, hankerings, at least for the time being. Not only that, but they are no longer envious of one another, nor do they suffer from anxiety or fear. Yeah, we quoted that last week, I think. 4.30.35. The quantum means without anxiety, and the material world means full of anxiety. As stated by Palabharaj, Sada Sam Rvinga Diham Ashun Grahat, 755. The living entity... The living entities who accepted this material world as residents are full of anxiety. <clears throat> a place immediately becomes Vaikuntha whenever the holy topics of personality God had are discussed by pure devotees. This is the process of Shravanan Kirtana Vishnu. 7523 Chanting and hearing about the Supreme Lord Vishnu, as Supreme Lord himself confirms. Naham Vishtam Vaikuntha Yoginam Hideshriva Yatra Gayantri Madhvakta Datra Dishami Narada My dear Narad, actually I do not reside in all my abode of Vaikuntha, nor do I reside within the heart of the yogis, but I reside in the place where my pure devotees chant my holy name and discuss my form, pastimes and qualities. <clears throat> because of these present of the Lord in the form of transcendental vibration, the Vaikuntha atmosphere is evoked. This atmosphere is, this atmosphere is without fear and anxiety. One living entity does not fear another. By hearing the holy names and glories, 
of the Lord, a person executes pious activities. Uh, Thus his material hankerings immediately stop. The Sankirtan movement started by the satiety, but Krishna consciousness is meant to is meant for creating Vaikuntha, the transcendental world that is without anxiety, even in, even in this material world. The method is a propagation of the Shravanam Kirtanam, processed throughout the world. In this material world, everyone is envious of his fellow man. And <clears throat> animalistic envy exists in human society as long as there is no performance of Sankirtan Yagi. The chanting of the holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. The Pashetas, is that right? Pachetas. Therefore decide to remain always in the society of devotees, and they considered that to be the highest benediction possible in human life. <coughs> See, this is the process. And as long as you are in contact with Krishna, then everything becomes, you know, perfect. You know. Yeah. You know. Supreme Lord Narayan is present among devotees who engage in hearing and chanting the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Narayan is the ultimate goal of sannyasa those in the renounced order of life and Narayan is worshipped through the Sankatan movement by those who are liberated from material contamination. Indeed, they recite the holy name again and again. So I guess I'm taking most of your time now, right? I think we will okay. take rest right now. Oh, good <laughs> it's a long purport, eh? 37. Dear Lord, the person that associates devotees wander all over the world to purify even the holy place of pregnancy. Is not such activity pleasing to those who are actually afraid of material existence? Two kinds of devotees, Kostanandi and Bhajanandi. The time you can read the book or that? Someone at the door. Hey, Mataji. Someone at the door. Dear Lord, by virtue of a moment association with Lord Shiva, who is very dear to you and who is very most intimate friend, we are fortunate to attend you. You are the most expert physician Lord. capable of treating the incurable disease of material existence. On account of a great fortune, even we have been able to take shelter at your lotus feet. So see how, you know, by chanting about Krishna, it is so powerful, you know. So we should just carry on this program that is given by our spiritual master. Without yeah. doubt or hesitation, go on, you know, and eventually you'll be able to capture the Lord Krishna, be able to capture, you know. Yeah. Oh, we know so many verses. <laughs> uh, so you know so many verses. Because <clears throat> you idea, no, this way all is coming out automatically. I think because of your presence, all of you. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> What's the meter for this one, Prabhu? We always forget the meter. This one is Jnana Priyasam Mudapasya Mamanteva Jivanti Samukharitam Bhavadiya Vartam Stane Sita Suttigatam Tanuvam Manobir He Priyasa Jita Jutopiya Sita Istri Lokyam That's the meter. Mm? Okay. Record it and try to write it. <laughs> you can practice now, very easy. Mm? But his answer is here. <clears throat> Those who are even re well remaining situated in the established social position throw away the process of speculative knowledge and with their body, words, and mind offer all respect to the description of your personality and activities. 
dedicating a life to these narrations which are vibrated by you personally and by your pure devotion certainly conquer your lordship although you are otherwise unconquerable by anyone within the three worlds it was been quoted many many times in the cc and the bhagavatam and bhagavad you know that the upad man chaitanya mahaprabhu spoken by rama you know after he realized he made a big mistake of trying to check with krishna you know stealing the cows you know and the boys so i guess you have anything add to add um krishna any question chang krishna is being quiet today he's cooking or something oh, i'm concentrating on the, on that and cooking at the same time sorry for <laughs> the last two verses i'm very satisfied with very nice sure all verses actually the sadam will be overly overly very pure now huh <laughs> yeah we hear association for it <laughs> <laughs> No, why not invite uh, what's his name, the one in uh, New Zealand? You try to call him. Who's that, Prabhu? Thomas, Thomas. Ah, huh? I talked to him a long time ago, but now he's associating with the uh, Hanuman, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. They're but trying to. Uh, they don't have a class. Supposed to be on Tuesday, you know. So maybe you can ask him to, if you like, he can come on this one. Hmm? Yeah, I can. Yeah, definitely. Mm, just gather people, no, whoever you like, whoever in Australia, if they want to come on, let come on, no. Mm? Yeah, I mean the people that we have around here are not. I think the new ones here is not so. You know, these topics are not meant for them. You know? There's a couple that may be here. They're older, but they they're really much into the philosophy. I think they might be able to. Oh, if you think Understood. they're okay, then I don't know right now. But newcomers, ah, uh, they become a bit bored. You no, know, they see so many verses, their mind gets in a bit, you know, wrong. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Better to no, think that they fix it, you know. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I'm recorded this tape, this uh, conversation. I mean, this class. If we can play it back, it'll be very nice. I can send you the link, you know. No, dear. So is away to is away in France at the moment. Oh sorry bro. So much for your kind time and you know your dedication to pro hard pushing on in some very difficult environment and situation. I am certainly taking the dars of all your lotus feet. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't. Please. <laughs> Please keep it up. I know oh. the tough but when the tough gets going when the thing is tough the tough gets going today, you know <laughs> that's true <laughs> that's true <laughs> really to to singapore <laughs> well it is a little bit i mean at least here yeah, the prasadam is overwhelming there's so much we can't even finish you know? yeah right is any restriction so much of milk i mean so much of sabji Any restrictions easing there in Singapore, bro? Yeah. Are the restrictions getting better or not? No, it's not getting better. They don't want the Hare Krishna here at all. You know, period. Yeah, right. Yeah, we are fighting a difficult enough you know, situation. I think so you know, Krishna will make some arrangements. You still have to stay inside your block. You cannot go anywhere, huh? They are making it difficult for anything, you know. Very difficult. But we have, uh, of course, we have to concentrate on the Indians for now. Others are difficult, but we are keep trying, you know. You were both all here, you know. You, you, you know the situation. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Much more tough. But in Australia, I think it is easier. They don't have that kind of a so-called, you know, stipulation, harassment, and so many things, you know. No, it's, it's much easier. Yeah. So you know, you have to take the challenges. What it is, hmm? everywhere is challenge. Hmm? Different. Situation. Why don't you? Hmm? Why don't you? Do all the Singapore try and be liberated. <laughs> what again? Move I should Australia, all. Australia, for example. Should come to here yeah, and set up a temple, and they'll become it here so much. Yeah, yeah, set up a temple where again? I didn't get the last line. In Australia, you should all come to Australia 
and forget if, Singapore. If, if anything happens, like then we adjust it. But then coming there also another restriction, all problems, you know. Maybe you should try to get that so that permit, you know, to see if we can experiment with one person first and see how it goes, no? The religious visa. Yeah, but then you have to pay him a salary and all kind of stuff, isn't it? No. Ah, uh, no, you don't have to. We just have to support it. So we just have to support. We can try, you know, but now it is impossible because of the virus. We have to wait till things kind of ease up, you know. We need a um a permanent place of worship to do that. So we either need to rent a place in town. Mm. That's going to be the that that's the first thing we have to do in order to get everything else is set up. Visa, we've got all the right status and all the right documents. Why don't we just you need. do something if you have a friend, you just get a paper saying that you're renting, but you don't do nothing. Else. Sorry, so that we're renting. paper from someone who just said that you're renting, but you're not actually physically there, you know. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, maybe to submit, you know, they say, Yeah, we are renting and you're going there once a week. What's the problem? You know? yeah. Yeah. Do that. I don't know if you do it when you're too straight. Yeah, it's possible. Okay. Just get a letter from someone saying that I'm renting, you know, and they know so much price that, you know, we are using the place once a week or something, you know. Yeah. Something you can think about, you know. Who wants to come here? I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, people. Pots and, you know, clean the floor, you know. Well, we're high up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> if you need a maid, I'll be there, boy. <laughs> we need an extra grandfather. <laughs> oh, yeah, we need another grandfather here. <laughs> I've got two here now. <laughs> Plenty of <time. laughs> Okay. So, okay, I think we can think about it, you know. Because there are so many people, you know, of course they want to, but of course we want to get a good man, you know. They want to come there and misuse the whole thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. The whole, who we say in the whole India would like to come there for sure, you know, and the whole China also. Yeah, we get we get many messages from <laughs> Indians and Bengalis. <laughs> <laughs> All of them want to get out, you know. Yeah, most of them want to get a job, though. Well, for support of families, that makes sense, but, you know. They all want to get to the heavenly world, they think, you know. They yeah. think that everything is as bad as anywhere, you know, but that always is always prevailing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Once, once we get land, it'll be a lot easier, too, because yeah, then so. it's somewhere for people to stay, yeah. you know. Then it's very right. easy, you know. Because this is another verse that, you know, no one in this material world has become free from the four principles of birth, that all age disease, age and disease, even by fleeing to the various planets. But now that you have appeared, my Lord, that is fleeing in fear of you. The living entity is having obtained shelter, a lotus feet by your mercy, are sleeping in full mental peace. So you can go anywhere in the world and you cannot become happy unless you get to the lotus feet of the Lord. Yeah, very true. So, okay, I guess we will um, I'll stop the sharing. The recording as well.